My relationship with food is an interesting one because I grew up in a household that really centered their entire focus around food. Every day, I like to come in and taste every single flavor because, you know, what they say is like the first five minutes of the day sets the tone for what the day looks like, so I like to start my day with ice cream. Early on, I knew I loved to cook. I knew I needed to be involved with food. And I didn't really think that this is something I could do as, as a career. There wasn't a chef that looked like me, that talked like me, that cooked like me, that I could look up to. So at that moment, I decided, you know what, this is something I definitely wanted to go into and explore more. So I was born in Kuwait uh, to Palestinian parents, and then I moved to Minnesota in uh, 1997. Saffron was our first fine dining restaurant that we opened up. That was ahead of its time. I was 23 at the time that we opened, and I had no idea what I was doing. Saffron was kind of a representation of me, my culinary heritage, and then me sort of cooking that culinary heritage in a, in a modern day uh, setting and introduce them to the culture via the food. Yeah, because I don't think these habaneros were as spicy as the first batch that we did. But also remember that we got the smoked After opening up Saffron and just cooking the Middle Eastern food for a while, I was eating at different restaurants and, and sort of discovering world cuisine. So that got me super excited about just international cuisine and, and world food. And the more that I ate that food, the more that I wanted to learn about it, and the more that I wanted people to try it out. The texture is killer. A little bit more of the habanero to the brown down. I opened up a food truck and we served international street food. From the food truck, we ended up opening up uh, World Street Kitchen in South Minneapolis. And then from there, we opened up our ice cream shop, Milk Jam Creamery. And we opened up Grand Catch, our seafood restaurant in St. Paul. So because we want to make the biscuits a yeah, little yeah. bit larger, mm -hmm. but I still want them like wrapped in the paper. So my role in the restaurants kind of continues to change and evolve as the time goes by. We've hired a lot of really talented chefs and cooks. And so my role is the culinary visionary for the company and take those people and mold them up and kind of figure out how can we get those people to run those companies and give their own stamp on these different cuisines. And that's really what brings me the, the most amount of happiness right now is, is being able to teach people these different cuisines and then seeing how they spin off of it. Tell them I appreciate them ordering it this way. Personally, thank them. The other part of what I do is managing our social media. And that started out after I shot my first cookbook. Pumpkin with toasted pecans and uh, honeycomb, super monochromatic. I just became enamored with food photography. I sat and I styled all of the photographs for our cookbook and it really brought me a lot of joy. It made me happy to just kind of set up this food and, and shoot it and seeing these talented photographers, their vision of what this dish looked like. Awesome. Yep. That's the one. I've been collecting cookbooks for about a little over 15 years now. My favorite cookbooks in this collection is, uh, is the manuscript that uh, my parents uh, wrote. This is uh, sort of uh, their work. So while we were living in Kuwait, my parents started writing a cookbook and photographing their recipes. Then once they started going into it, it became more of let's preserve this culture and heritage of the Palestinian people. And then around 1990, we moved to Jordan. This manuscript got packed up in a box and got lost in the shuffle. It wasn't until about 2004 that my brother found uh, this manuscript in a box. It traveled three continents. I knew that I had 
a duty to, to kind of revive this book in a way, shape or form. I wrote a cookbook, The New Mediterranean Table, and in The New Mediterranean Table, I tried to sort of break down that barrier that this is foreign food. I cook dishes that used kind of Midwestern ingredients and uh, Middle Eastern techniques and sort of just said, here, just make this happen. You can, you can do this, this is easy. Changing small little elements in, in a spice blend uh, lends it to a different continent. So this is one of those kind of basic spice blends that you would find uh, in the Middle East. So the thing with spices that I always like to point out is that, as you can see, it's all like really, really small batches. This right here is Syrian pepper, Aleppo pepper, the green cardamom, cloves, um, cumin, uh, coriander. This right here is allspice, really a quintessential ingredient in Middle Eastern food. Uh, this much allspice will probably last me, you know, six months which is really what a spice should last. Obviously, anyone that goes into the food world doesn't do it for the money. <laughs> People go into the food world because it brings you joy. It makes you happy. And that's really the large portion of why I cook. And I love to share these creations with people. I love cooking for family and friends because it, it really brings me joy. I just cook the, you know, whatever comes to mind and it's not adhering to a menu per se, it's not adhering to a recipe, it's just kind of cooking from the heart. The one signature flavor profile that I have is flavor. That's, that's it. I love uh, big, bold flavors and then layer it with different nuances so it doesn't seem boring while you eat it. Sometimes I want to showcase a certain ingredient that may be in season. And then sometimes just kind of dishes come up in my head, uh, different flavor combinations that just sound really good in my head. And you just go into the kitchen and you, and you put them together and, and hopefully they work. Or, and if they don't, you sort of retool little things um, to make it exactly what, what you want it to be. You know, when I first moved to this country, my brother and I sat with each other and, and my brother said to me, you can do anything in this country. You can be the greatest person or you can be the worst person. Um, but just remember one thing, you are an ambassador for Palestinians uh, all across the world here in this city. And I was 13 years old. I took that to heart and I, and I kind of looked at that as being kind of a jumping point in my food, in the way that our restaurants are full of hospitality and, and sort of the love that we have for the people. And so that is kind of the love that goes into it, the Middle Eastern hospitality, the sort of the Palestinian roots that come into it. We just say Bismillah, Bismillah. which Bismillah. means in the name of God. Bismillah. 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 Awesome. Let's get in this. Okay. <laughs>